Hey guys, Grumpy's back here, and he's grumpier than ever because I think I just uh, found a bug in Caden Live while I was trying to produce this video. This is just a reference video from my previous video on setting up the OpenSense HA. I kind of went over the physical stuff there. You saw the equipment and how it was all you know plugged in, set up, blah, blah, blah. So now we're going to go actually into the interface settings. So I just took screenshots. It's the same thing. First thing you're going to want to do is go into interfaces and create a high availability interface or whatever you'd like to call it. In my case, I just called it uh, HA. This is just a private IP that you can use. This is the communication between the one, the master and the backup unit. So in my case, I just IP at 10.99.99.1. You can use any internal uh, addressing scheme you like. And yeah, just static IP. That's That's pretty much it. Next we have, uh, we need to set up our, our internal interfaces. So on my LAN interface, it's gonna have a static IP and the IP address that, that for this particular network is 10.0.0.2. Now that is the interface IP address. Our actual virtual IP will be the 10.0.0.1, which will be presented to all the clients um, as default gateway, things like that. So just a basic static IP, do the same thing on the other node. Uh, the other node will be something like 10.0.0.3. Okay, so just adjust to your network conditions. Interface on my WAN side, uh, same thing. This is going, I have a slash 29 here, so I have some IP addresses to play with. So in this particular case, my IP is going to be .235. On my backup, sorry, the last octet in my public IP is ends in .235. On my backup node, I have set it up as .236. And my virtual IP will be the global NAT address that I want the clients to be seen uh, out on the internet. So that will be 234. Under the HA settings, uh, we've turned it on and I've enabled synchronized states. And um, also you don't need to mess around with the synchronized IP address. It's a, I think it's a directed unicast or something. So it already knows how to communicate with the other, with the other node. And this is gonna be the synchronized config to IP P setting. So this is the, the target backup units IP. So not, not the master's unit. I'm on the master right now. This is the IP address of the backup unit. And then also you need to authenticate there. I've used root, probably a bad idea. I should change that. And then under here, this is where you're going to check mark all the services and configurations that you want to sync over to the other node. So in my case, I have everything turned on and synchronized states. You're probably going to want to do this, uh, especially if you have, if you want to be more of a seamless uh, failover, you know, especially if you have like IP uh, sec tunnels or open VPN tunnels, um, I guess there might be some uh, cases where you don't want to, where you don't want to have the uh, state tables synchronized, but in most cases you probably will. There's something else to go over here. The disable preempt just means that I'm on the master right now. So if I turn this on, and I do a failover or there is a failover to the backup node, it will not flip back to this master node. Um, in most cases, you're probably gonna leave this off. In some cases, you might wanna leave it on, I'm not sure. So that's up to you uh, depending on your environment and setup. All right, moving on to here. So you'll see if you go into um, system, high availability and status, uh, you'll just get a general status of, you know, this firmware setting, uh, here's the firmware version, and then there's a button here that you can click to do a manual synchronization. You may wanna do this like just before a manual failover to do a firmware update or something like that. So that would be a case where you might wanna click on that button, but I do find that um, most things get synchronized automatically. Uh, but if you just wanna be sure, go ahead and do a manual all right, so we got that set up. So now we have to set up our virtual IPs under firewall and virtual IP. This is where you're gonna set up uh, your virtual IP. So you're gonna add a new virtual IP for your LAN interface. It's gonna be CARP. It's gonna be your virtual IP address. So in this case, this is the 10.0.0.1. Put in a virtual IP password here. Um, pick a unique VHID group. Um, I think in most cases, you're gonna want uh, every interface to have its own VHID group. Um, it'll automatically select on here if you click on that one. I don't mess with these advertising frequency things. So that's pretty much it. You're gonna do the same thing for the WAN side. Again, it's a CARP uh, VIP and it's on the WAN interface and there is my .234. So this is gonna be my public IP that, this is my global NAT address that people will see us coming out to the internet from. 
And yeah, same thing, virtual IP password. Group is a unique number again. I think this is under, yeah, this is under virtual IPs, set it at firewall virtual IPs settings. You'll see that you know, this is just a general overview of what you've done here. So we have a LAN, we have a WAN, and I have a partner network uh, connecting to a vendor in this particular case. I also need a virtual IP for this. You'll notice that if you go into the uh, lobby, uh, into the dashboard, you can add a CARP widget. So this is what your uh, CARP widget would probably look like. Um, it's just telling you that <clears throat> these current interfaces are owned by master and are running on the master. And you can see those virtual IPs uh, here. Now, how, how, do you tell, how do you tell what unit is um, master or slave? Well, if you go to the physical IP address here of our master unit, so 10.0.0.2, you'll see here that um, it says master and it has our VIPs here and it is currently the owner and running on these interfaces here. If I go to the backup node, 10.0.0.3, this is a shrunken version, um, you'll see that it says backup on all three of those interfaces, on all three of those virtual IPs. Basically, setting up HA in a nutshell, uh, it's very easy to do. Just remember, it's what you're gonna wanna do when you've set everything up, uh, you're gonna wanna go ahead and test uh, failover. So you can do that in a couple of ways. You can power off one unit, you can reboot one unit, you can go ahead and yank uh, a physical cable out from one of the units on one of the interfaces, except HA, you know, let's hope that you know those stay up, the HA interface. But uh, you can pull your WAN out, you can pull your uh, LAN out, everything like that. So it's I've actually tested it already. It works pretty well. A couple of issues I'm having with an IPsec tunnel to another uh, to another vendor, um, but it's not so bad. I might go over uh, some of that with you guys. I'll do some uh, failover testing as well. I just I can't do this uh, during the day uh, during business hours, so I'll probably try to uh, do this over a weekend and I'll show you the failover happen in real time. All right, guys, if you have any questions, leave some comments. Other than that, um, the next video, again, we'll do some testing on the HA failover OpenSense. See you in the next one.